Hello, this is Saul from Trifo Productions with a blender quick tip for real, so to speak. And the reason why I'm doing this, I guess you can call it a face reveal, is because of the fact that uh, I've reached, with your help, reached over 1,000 subscribers. And I really appreciate that. And, you know, without your guys' support physically, I probably wouldn't have reached this at this point in time. But I just want to say thank you to everyone out there who has uh, watched the videos and who, who's, uh, you know, pretty much learned from it. And really thank you guys for all your support and all your help. And I know YouTube doesn't give out uh, play buttons for reaching a uh, thousand subscribers. And I think it's because I know they probably think it's mediocre, but uh, I don't. And my son, my children don't either. Uh, so my son, he he's four years old and he made this, I don't know if you can see it, this play button for me. Uh, it looks pretty good and I'm going to keep this for quite some time hopefully if he doesn't get his hands on it but uh, he made this play button for me and the unique thing about this play button besides the fact that my son made it is that it's uh, a one of a kind yeah you can go to Walmart yourselves and get some play on and create your own but my son made this one so I appreciate that for my son thank you Lucas thanks Sophia and uh, for this uh, I guess monumental time um, I just want to give some actual tips that you can use in Blender to help you become a blend, a better, uh, I was going to say blender, but become a better uh, CGI artist. Um, the first thing is, I'm going to start looking at my cell phone because I've got some notes on my cell phone. I want to try to get to as many topics as I can in a short amount of time. But the main thing is just to stay focused. I just one thing my dad taught me. Well, both my parents told me growing up, but specifically my dad, is that you don't have to do something several hours a day to get good at it. Just do it maybe five times a day every day. Because if you wait until you've got enough time to get it done or to start doing it, and you want to do it maybe four or five hours a day, guess what? That time is never going to happen. I mean, for myself, I'm married, as you can see with the uh, ring on the finger here. And I've got two children. My daughter's eight. My son is four. I work. You know, so I cook, I clean, and all that stuff. That's every day. So I don't have, you know, ample time to just sit down in front of the laptop or in front of my computer and work on CGI animations several hours a day. I've got to make time maybe five minutes a day to get it done. And if you do it five minutes a day every day, by the end of the week, you've built up you know, quite a bit of uh, time that you've put into it to get it done, as opposed to trying to wait for an opportune time to do it because that time is not going to happen. Second thing, <clears throat> excuse me, second thing is, uh, don't worry about the views. I mean, that's one thing that I've seen with uh, CGI artists sometimes when they put things on YouTube on Instagram or any social media site, sometimes they get caught up in, well, I worked on this project for like three, four hours or three, four months, put it up, and I've only got two views. And that leads to some kind of discouragement. So when you put things up on on social media, you don't even have to put it up if you don't want to. Just have that joy of just creating uh, animations or creating CG artwork by yourself for your own pleasure. Just do that. Don't worry about you know how many people are going to see it not enough people have seen it I want more people to see it don't worry about any of that stuff just have joy in doing CGI just for the sake of it the third point says learn from your mistakes to have content to put up on YouTube and for myself that's some of the tutorials I do online are from mistakes I've made I've, I've done some errors here and there and I've learned from it and those errors end up being tutorials um, for example I was trying to I think I was trying to create some kind of sphere or some kind of ball and ended up doing a, the wrong procedure to get that uh, ball made so I ended up doing a tutorial on it to help me understand it for the next time and then when it comes to for me for when it comes to tutorials just in general when I do tutorials I know I'm doing it to help other people out there who are watching, but it's also there to help me because in Blender, and I think it's the same for all CGI animation, all CGI packages, 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 40, all of them. 
you have to do specific steps before you can actually get to uh, your end result. And some of those steps, if you don't do, it, do them in sequence, which means you do them one after the other, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for or that you need at that point in time. So for myself, when I do tutorials and put them online, it's to help me remember the steps I need to take to create a simulation, fire, water, so on and so forth. And like I said before, sometimes those mistakes that I've made creating something turn into tutorials. So in order for you to have content on YouTube and to learn and to learn from your mistakes, so to speak, you just just do it. You don't have to be afraid to think, well, if I make a mistake, that means I, I'm not good at it. Therefore, I'm just going to just quit altogether. You don't have to do that. Just keep going. You've made a mistake. You've learned from it. Make a tutorial out of it and go on to the next step which is also the next step or the next point I want to bring up here. Let me see, it says, CGI is 10% creativity and 90% problem solving. And that's just the fact. I've been doing CGI for the past, let's say, 10 plus years. And that whole time that I've been doing CGI, I've seen myself that it's 90% problem solving. I've done simulations when it comes to smoke and fires, things like that from scratch. And I've, you know, in order to save time, sort of recreating the wheel again, so to speak, I just take that simulation and put it into another scene. And for some reason, when I put it into another scene, it doesn't work. So I have to figure out, okay, why isn't this simulation working? It worked fine over here in this blend file. I've taken it out of this blend file and transferred it over to another blend file, but for some reason, in the second blend file, it doesn't work. So that's pretty much the whole concept and the whole idea of CGI animation. It's just problem solving, making mistakes and coming out of those mistakes as a better person, having a better understanding, so to speak, excuse me, of what you're doing. So don't get discouraged once again if you find it difficult at the beginning. Learn it, look at it as a learning process. Because that's what CGI is. You have to learn as you go. Like I said before, I've been doing this for 10 plus years. And I'm still learning how to do this stuff. I'm still learning how to do things in CGI as long as I've been doing it. So don't get discouraged. Remember, CGI is 10% creativity, 90% problem solving. And I think the last two points here. The first of the last two is challenge yourself doing CGI projects that you've never done before. And that's how you can grow to in CGI animation. Doing something new. If, if, if you create a face the first time, as a first time, uh, your first project, create the whole body next. After you create the whole body, don't go create another body. Put clothes on that body. After you've done the clothes, simulate the clothes as a cloth simulation. If you've done a water simulation for the first time, next time that comes around, do a fire simulation. If after you've, done the, after you've done this fire simulation, do the smoke. So once you keep trying to do something different every single time, because that's what I've done myself. When I first started off doing CGI, if you look through my, our timeline on YouTube, the first animation I did was a coconut bouncing up on the beach. It was pretty rough, pretty crude. Because I've never done my first animation in Blender that I've ever done before. The second one that I did was the Atheist Reality. I got a lot of um, angry comments on that one, but I did that one. I've never done uh, a simulation where you have the eyes moving, things like that. The third one that I did was the Jesus Project. That was a big, big jump because I had created all these characters from scratch made the Jesus char character from scratch, made all the uh, models, the buildings, the pots, the grass, everything from scratch. I had never done that before. But in the process of me doing that, I learned so much from doing it. So now I've been getting better and better at it. So challenge yourself by not doing the same thing over and over again. Once you've done something and you've mastered it, go on to the next thing. Don't just stay in one place and stay stuck move on to your next objective to get better at CGI and the last point is I don't think I've spent so much time but the last point is learn how to do something yourself before 
from scratch before you use an add-on and that's important now there are a lot of add-ons for blender there are tree generators there are car generators building generators but the best thing you can do for yourself to help yourself out in the long run is learn how to, how to build this stuff by yourself that's the best thing and the reason why I say that is because of the fact that once you've learned how to do it yourself you'll, you'll have an understanding of how it works so if you use the add-on that generates all, all those elements if those add-ons have bugs in them you can fix it I've used add-ons before rig, rigging add-ons for human beings and sometimes there's a glitch in it so it would have to go into the add-on or go into the blend file itself or into the uh, generated character and I would have to reshape the bones or re, uh, re-weight the bones and that's just one example so yeah learn how to do these things by yourself before you use an add-on that'll help you in the long run and that's all that's pretty much everything I had to say for this special occasion of getting over 1,000 subscribers and once again I really thank you guys again for watching the videos and subscribing to the channel uh, thank you guys who are subscribing now those of you who are subscribing in the future and I'll see you guys on the next one alright adios